Hey everyone, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for coming to this talk. Today we're going to be talking about AI hardware infrastructure at Facebook. Um, my name is Kevin Lee. I am a technical program manager here at Facebook and I'm joined with Xiaodong Wang. He is a capacity and performance engineer. So um, today we're going to talk about um, a little bit about what we've done in the past, uh, what we're going to be doing uh, in the future, and some of the things that we're thinking about for our future designs. So first off, let's talk about today and what we're doing with AI hardware at Facebook. So AI research, so Facebook, we are very committed to developing uh, AI and AI research and its disciplines. Um, so we have, we, the, the type of research that we do um, gets open, open source in the future. Um, we develop and uh, applied machine learning teams to, um, to put these type of uh, research into production. And we have AI infrastructure teams that go and build the type of hardware that's needed for all these um, pieces. Um, this is a good intersection between um, science, technology, and uh, production. Uh, all of this, uh, we are committed to making sure that all of this is open and in the public. So uh, you'll see today that we're going to be announcing a new server and also announcing a lot of the software pieces that we've done through um, Facebook open source. So before I go into the details, uh, I'd like to get, uh, clear up three common uh, terms that are used in an industry. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. So artificial intelligence is the superset of everything. So it's the program that can sense, reason, act, and adapt like humans. Machine learning is a program that can perform actions without explicitly being programmed. And deep learning is a type of technique that's being used to do machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, I, I would like to um, show you a video uh, of what we do with machine learning today at Facebook. Facebook is about sharing. In order to understand the complex things that people post on Facebook, we have images, we have text, we have articles. We need to understand people. And to understand people, we need to have AI. Because otherwise, these images are just you know, black boxes, or a news article is just a bag of words. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. If we want to try to build some kind of artificial intelligent agent, it needs to have all of the perceptual senses that an agent that operates in the world needs to have. And that's where computer vision comes into place. You have an image, and to humans it's obvious what is depicted in the image. But to a computer it's just a list of pixels, just a set of numbers. The goal of computer vision is to try and develop techniques that allow you to basically go from that set of numbers to understanding what is in the image. Basically to make machines see like people see. Like I'm looking at everything around me, I can understand there's people, there's a table, there's a chair. I want machines to be able to get an image and understand exactly the same thing. What the computer sees is just pixels. I know from these pixels, we are supposed to make computers understand high level semantics. For example, that you in front of me are happy. How am I gonna do this just from the aggregation of pixels? We can recognize simple objects, so things like cats or dogs or cars, but we really would like to recognize all the things in the world. The other thing we're trying to do is go beyond just recognizing objects. You look at an image, well, maybe you want to have a conversation about the image. For those who are blind, you can say, this is an image with a car and a man standing in front of it. And if I could say, hey, what type of car is it? And it could respond back, you know, Chevy Camaro or something like that. Like, that's the AI that we want, one that's interactive, one that's helpful one that really does perceive at a deep level. Right now is an extremely exciting time to be working on computer vision research. We have seen a lot of progress, but we are far behind human intelligence. Now going forward, the challenge is, how do we take that information and then start reasoning with it? How do we do what we might naturally think of as, as, as conscious sort of thinking about the world? How do we put that into artificial intelligence? Those are the key problems going forward. So as you can hear from the video, this is one example of what we do with AI at Facebook. Um, another example um, I'd like to show you is um, basically on your uh, website, on, on the front page of Facebook, you're able to um, do facial recognition, um, do search, um, machine translation. If you speak a different language, we're able to translate it from your native language to something that um, the, other, the, the end user can read. Um, ads, ads targeting, um, newsfeed, and newsfeed ranking. Um, so 
as we, as we said before in, in our past, in our, our roadmap, um, our, our CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, has talked about it before. Um, our, our mission here is to develop and make the world more open and, connect, open and connected. And at the end of the day, uh, we are trying to make um, uh, more intelligent systems. Um, so you may ask, why now? So artificial intelligence itself has been coined from the 1950s. And so uh, we think that the, the reason why like, artificial intelligence is here today is because of more advanced research that's being done in the field, a lot more publicly available data for us to train on, and also um, uh, a higher powered compute, which we'll discuss more uh, later on today. So to simplify the task of leveraging machine learning at Facebook, we design our internal uh, platforms, which we call FB Learner. FB Learner is composed of three tools, FB Learner Feature Store, FB Learner Flow, and FB Learner Predictor. Each of the tools is responsible for one major component of the machine learning pipeline. And we will see in the next slide how they interact with each other. So FB Learner as a general platform is taking advantage of the frameworks and the infrastructures we built at Facebook, which is Cafe2, PyTorch, and Onyx. So we have released all the three platforms, uh, we have released all the three frameworks to the open source community. And we believe by collaborating in the open, we can help our deep learning community to advance the state of art machine learning technology. Now let's take a deeper dive into how the FB Learner works at Facebook to deal with machine learning. The training data, which is the user interactions, likes, posts, comments, photos, and stories, are first stored in our data storage. Our FB Learner feature store will then generate features based on those data and feed it into the FB Learner flow. FB Learner flow will build, train, and evaluate our machine learning models based on those features. And then, after the model is fully trained with satisfying accuracy, we will deploy the model into our FB Learner predictor. FB Learner predictor will then inference or predict based on the new data that comes in. For example, uh, FB Learner predictor can predict the uh, can make a personalized recommendation on the on the post or comments that our user would like to see the most. It's worth mentioning that the entire FB Learner platform is based on uh, it is backed up by the OCP component that contributed by Facebook. The data storage and the FB Learner feature store is supported by the Bryce Canyon data storage system. FB Learner Flow does the training and evaluation on our machine learning hardware platform, Big Basin, and the compute platform, Tioga Pass. And our FB Learner predictor do the inference on compute platforms, Tioga Pass, and Twin Lake. Among all those platforms, the Big Basin is specifically developed for the machine learning hardware and we would like to focus on the machine learning hardware for the rest of this talk. If we look back into the history, in the recent years, we've seen a significant increase in the investment of our machine learning hardware at Facebook. In 2012, we started initial experimentation of the GPU servers in our lab. In 2013, we began our initial deployment of the GPU servers with the HP SL270S platform with the uh, NVIDIA Kepler GPUs. Since its deployment, we have learned a great deal about deploying GPUs in our data center at large. And we have learned issues such as thermal, uh, thermal efficiency, application performance, uh, serviceability, and cluster management, et cetera. Learning all these lessons, in 2015, we have developed our first machine learning hardware platform, Big Sur, and we contribute this to the OCP. It is also very well received by our data center. In 2016, we refresh our machine learning hardware with Big Basin Pascal. This is our first generation disaggregated design of our machine learning hardware platforms. And today, we are very excited to announce our next step of our innovation, Big Basin Volta. So it is built on top of the same design philosophy. Big Basin Volta is our second generation disaggregated design, which disaggregates the CPU compute head node with the GPU box. As we can see uh, in this figure, the CPU head node is sitting on top of the GPU box, and they talk with each other by the PCIe cable. This modular design will allow us to take advantage 
of the existing OCP component to build customized design that, uh, that, that makes the most sense for us in terms of application performance, uh, the power efficiency, and the total cost of ownership. And this also allows us to expedite the process of, the, of integrating the newest technology into our data center fleet because we can upgrade the CPU and GPU separately. So we have upgraded the GPUs in our big basin platform from previous generations Pascal to the newest NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA Volta V100 GPU. Due to the added GPU performance, we have also upgraded our CPU handnode to Tioga Pass. This not only provides us uh, extra CPU performance, but also allows us to double the PCIe connection between the CPU and the GPU. In addition to this, we have also upgraded our Ethernet card to 100 gig NIC, which, allow, which gives us extra uh, network capacity to do the large scale distributed training and also faster data, data loading. So combining all of these, this provides us about 66% in the total platform performance increase compared with the previous Big Base and Pascal generation. Besides the performance, we have also upgraded our mechanical design in the Big Basin Volta system. With the heat sink and upgraded fan, we have improved airflow for this Big Basin Volta platform. We have also designed enlarged handles for better serviceability. So if you want to learn more about the, the, the design details of Big Basin Volta, you can go to our booth or you can attend our workshop tomorrow at 11.30 AM. Big Basin Volta is a key foundation of our Facebook machine learning workloads. Computer vision is also one, is one of them, uh, which is the most, among the most important machine learning workload at Facebook. We build machine learning models to classify images into concrete topics, so that it not, it not only allows people to search photos of their favorite moment, but it can also provide an immersive user experience to even the visually impaired people which, uh, with the talking images, where the phone can actually read over the images for you at your fingertip. Such computer vision technology requires a large amount of compute power to, uh, to do the training. With the uh, Big Basin Volta platform, we, uh, for the single GPU training job, we can achieve 66% performance improvement compared with the previous generation uh, Big Basin Pascal. And if we enable two, four, or all the eight GPUs in Big Basin Volta platform, we can achieve almost linear scaling in the training throughput. The Volta GPU also comes with the high bandwidth FP16 tensor core technology. By enabling this new technology, we can further give a more, a more performance boost uh, to the training throughput. Machine translation is another, is another important machine learning workload at Facebook. We use machine translation to translate posts and comments um, so that we can break the communication barrier uh, for the people who speak different languages. So this slide actually shows an example of translating a post from Turkish to English. On the left side, we show a phrase-based statistical approach, which we used before for machine translation. As we can see, although we can translate the Turkish to English word by word accurately, the final English sentence is not very user-friendly. It's not very easy to understand. If we upgrade this approach to a neural network approach, we can significantly improve the translation quality. However, neural network approach requires a lot more training power than the previous approach. And with Big Basin Volta platform, we can, uh, we can satisfy this increased in, increasing demand in the training power. And we can also empower our researchers and machine learning developers to build even larger and more complex models to help improving our user experience. So what's next for us? Um, so there are four major pillars that we're looking at. Um, the first one is consolidated hardware design. We're looking to ask the suppliers and our vendors to work on um, building common form factors for us to be able to deploy and deploy more efficiently in our data center. At Facebook, power is a very important resource for us. So we want to be able to optimize the, G the uh, accelerator so that we can um, work on our workloads a little bit better without wasting power. Um, we found that the disaggregated design worked really well. And you can see that from the, from the generation from Pascal to Volta, where we, are, we were able to drop in a new solution. 
And the final part of it is we would like to make a platform where we, are, we can be vendor agnostic, where other suppliers are able to drop into this platform so that we can then um, do, do more AI research with that. So at Facebook, we always say the journey is 1% finished, and this is truly the right statement for this field. And AI and AI research it has a long way to go. Um, so please join us today, uh, tomorrow on Wednesday at 11.30 for our Big Basin Volta uh, workshop. Thank you.